Justin. Justin joins me, but um, here we are, week eight of week eight of TN Sports Chat. Um, it's kind of amazing. I feel like we've been saying that for the last four weeks, maybe that it's uh, you know here we are. It's another week, week eight. We're just that much closer to the end of the season. Um, I mean, can you believe it that we're already at this point of the year? But uh, a lot of big games last week, a lot of big games again coming up this week. And this is kind of, I guess this is kind of crunch time, you know? Yeah. This is where we've been talking about it, that these are the games that are going to really decide a lot of these, you know, divisional races, um, you know, these league titles. This is, uh, this is sort of what it's, all, what it's all coming down to, I guess. Can't believe we are 8% of the way through the regular season. District playoff implications, league playoffs, and all that stuff. Uh, it's going to start heating up, and we're going to start to get a clearer picture of this. And we can talk about some of that over the next couple of weeks. But yeah, it still feels like summer, though, man. I feel like we just did our football previews, but it's still 80 degrees out. Yeah. Just got the air conditioner fixed in my car, so it might be too little too late for me. I don't know. But... Big, if true. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's. I think we've been blessed with a pretty nice fall so far. It's nice to be able to cover games and be you know, outside, still maybe wearing shorts and things like that. But uh Action is heating up uh, on the gridiron. So um, I don't know. This week we have Jim Thorpe's Mokwa, Lee Height, and Pottsville. Uh, two more, you know, big games in that Schuylkill, you know, Schuylkill Football League, uh, that Division One race. Uh, the Olympians, the Indians, uh, remain undefeated after big wins last week. You know, obviously Jim Thorpe takes down North Schuylkill, Lee Height, and holds off, you know, Tamakwa in a pretty epic, epic clash. That was our game of the week, and it certainly lived up to the billing. It was 41-35. Uh, it's Quan Bradley Chambers ran for a school record 373 yards. Uh, came down, you know, late stop. It was, that was huge. I mean, both games were huge, and I think both teams, Jim Thorpe and Lee Heighton, kind of, you know, deliver in, in those situations. Kind of what we expected, um, big tests, uh, both teams at home, you know, and both teams, both teams showed up and, uh, you know, put out, put out great efforts. So um, what are your thoughts on those two games last week? Great games, wish I could see any of them. I'm stuck here in the office, I'll be in here again because uh, this is my life. But <laughs> so uh, yeah, it sounded like a great game from everything I heard and read and just, you know, for the record, feel free to send us some comments and questions. We know high school football is life around here, and uh, it's pretty awesome. This is the best time of the season. But Tamaqua Lee Heighton, two teams everybody was interested in seeing how they kind of stacked up. You had Lee Heighton that had two quality wins over the past couple of weeks, and, and they had more quality wins. I'm just saying back-to-back -back wins, North Schuylkill and now Tamaqua. Um, and wow. Uh, it's just, it's just a weird season. You can usually kind of gauge a team thinking, okay, this team beat that team, so this team should beat this team. That theory's out the window, because you can't really connect the dots, right? Let, let, let's, let's, let's backtrack a little. Try to connect the dots here. Tamaqua lost to Possible by, you know, a, a decent amount. Pot first loss of the season. First loss of the season. Pottsville just got shut out by Blue Mountain. Tamaqua took care of Blue Mountain. It's like, okay, so, something's got to give there. Yeah, and you know, now this week you get obviously Jim Thorpe goes to Tamaqua, which is going to be looking to kind of get back on track, uh, back home. But it certainly isn't going to get uh, isn't going to get any easier right. against that Jim Thorpe team, which last week beat North School Globes forty two to eighteen. Jim Thorpe hadn't allowed a point since week one against Haven. Uh, North School got on the board. But um, but they made they made North Schuylkill work for it. I mean, there were like I think the first three drives, North I mean North Schuylkill wasn't getting anything, uh, three and outs, punts, and then that second half. I mean North Schuylkill cut that to a 28-18 game, and you're thinking fourth quarter this is you know we have something here, and all of a sudden a couple of big interceptions by you know Sean O'Toole, Justin St. Hill. And, um, you know, they punch it in a couple of times and they pull away, you know, and um, it ends up as a 42 to 18 game. But I think Jim Thorpe kind of showed that, uh, all right, so maybe maybe they don't uh, they don't pitch another shutout, but they're certainly still capable of, you know, kind of sticking with it. And they never got their heads down and, you know, they bounce back and, and they finish that game off strong. But uh, but so, too, did Lee Heighton against Tamaqua last week in a game that, uh really could have kind of gone either way. We had Tom McCarroll and Sam Bonner on with us last week. And um, certainly, you know, everything we talked about kind of ended up coming to fruition in that one, you know, with uh, with Tamakwa throwing the ball. I mean, we talked to Tom McCarroll earlier today, and, you know, you think if, if you 
said that one team was going to throw the ball and have success, the other was going to run it and have success, you would have thought it would have been Tamaqua running and Lehighton throwing, but it was Lehighton running with Chambers going for 373, and Tamaqua's quarterback, Stad Zuber and Braden Knobloch, had a lot of success through the air against the Indians. But, um, yeah, I mean, again, just uh, two big games and certainly, uh, certainly a lot to look forward to here as we're coming down the stretch. But those two teams... Maybe, I don't want to say kind of separated themselves, but they are the last two undefeateds in the area. So You look at that Lee and tamako game. Lee Heighton threw the ball only six times, but ran 37 for 487, kind of. You know, all these smash mouth Google League teams, Lee Heighton's only been in the league a few a few seasons, but they're telling everybody, hey, we can play that style too. Um, but behind Taquan Bradley Chambers, who set the school record for rushing yards. And the guy's record he broke was pretty good. Uh, yeah, he's had a pretty nice career, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, uh, Robbie Fry, who's now his uh, running back coach. So you definitely want to check out t tomorrow's paper. You might be asking, who is Taquan Bradley Chambers? Well, we'll give you all the answers. We're going to have a couple of really good stories on him and, and you know talk about him and you know where he came from and what he's doing, and uh, that you know big shout out to Lee Hayden football and uh, and to Quan for letting us you know learn about his story and when what he's been up to. But like you said about that game, Cody Share quietly had 12 carries for like 100 some yards too. So uh, big game, and like you said, Tamakwa throwing the ball. 30 times, and they completed almost two-thirds of their passes. So if you liked the offense, that game had a lot of it, and it kind of lived up to the bill. But uh, anything else on that game from last week? No, I think it's just, um, you know, again, it's one of those situations where we have those, you know, game game of the week kind of things, and you just really hope that, uh, that it delivers. And I felt like that game last week um, certainly kind of, you know, checked all those boxes and uh, was probably one of the best, you know, one of the best that we've had in the area and kind of just uh, – you know, certainly something that showed where these two teams are and why they are among, you know, among the best in our area, but also in school football. League. Right. Know, that's, uh, there's a reason they're contending for, um, you know, for these division titles and, uh, you know, where they are in terms of district standings and everything like that, too. So um, I think they kind of proved that point last week. So, yeah. And if you look at the Jim Thorpe game. How does uh, Justin St. Hill follow up his huge day? Had, what, 180 yards, something like that. So you know, Jim Thorpe getting it done behind him. And he threw the ball seven times, talked to him a couple weeks ago, and he said, I am a quarterback this year. I don't just run the Wildcat. And, you know, he's proven that theory true and doing a great job back there. Yeah, and he was, I mean, he definitely seemed comfortable. He took uh, the majority of the game, really. Um, took a lot of direct snaps. Um, you know, he was uh, running the ball, hand off to Sean O'Toole. Um, kind of had a couple of nice passes. He had a nice... So it was a screen pass to CJ Selby that went for about 50 yards in a score, but then he also hit O'Toole, um, you know, in the end zone on kind of like a short little out route. So, so I mean, he was he was making plays, um, and it's just sort of what he's done all year. Um, you know, if we thought that maybe the Blue Mountain game was kind of his breakout game, it seems like, um, you know, now he's just sort of kind of you know stamping his place um, as one of the best in the area, and um, you know why we kind of had such high expectations for him coming into this season after I think he rushed for 1,100 yards, 15 scores last year. So, um, you know, that's why, kind of why we thought he'd be such a big part of the offense, and, and he's been. So, uh, really impressive, yeah. A couple other Schuylkill League Division Two teams got big wins last week. Panther Valley, 30-6 to six over Shenandoah Valley. Uh, the Panthers, stout up front, held Shenandoah to negative 14 rushing yards, so big play in the trenches. And they, I guess they were clicking on the offensive side of the of the line of scrimmage, too, because Rini Figueroa had, what, 200 yards, I believe, on uh, not many carries and a handful of touchdowns. So Figueroa in that run game leading the Panthers to a big win and the linemen up front doing a great job, it seems. Yeah, and that's, I mean, obviously it's a huge, huge game, bounce back game for the Panthers. Um, certainly something coming off the Marion, the Marion loss. Um, big to get back in, get back kind of on track, I think, against the Shenandoah, a Shenandoah team that, um, you know, maybe is a little bit down, but either way, still have to come out and play um, and, and execute. And, you know, and they were able to do that, and they handled Shenandoah. So, I mean, the Panthers are three and four now, you know, and when you look at those district standings again with the six classes and oh, how yeah. many teams are going to get in. Um, right in the thick of the race. They are. And, I mean, this week they get Haven, which is certainly not an easy game, but they're, they're at three and four. and they start, They're certainly well positioned to to have that shot to play in a, in a meaningful 11th, 
or more games, you know, in in the postseason. So, um, so this is going to be big for Panther Valley, definitely moving forward these last couple weeks. And a really impressive way to bounce back for the Panthers after leading that game against Mary until the fourth quarter two weeks ago, giving up forty something points. And you really want to see how the Panthers were going to respond. So, big kudos to head coach Scott Price and yeah. that program for you know telling these kids keep your heads up. You know, they're not they're not quitting, guys. They're not quitting. They're right in the district race. So another big week for Panther Valley against Google Haven. I think head coach Scott Price knows Google Haven a little bit too. Yeah, it'll be maybe a little bit of a reunion kind of homecoming there. But uh, you know, it certainly still isn't going to be easy. But it's uh, hey, it's another opportunity for them to go out and get better. So um, so we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens on Friday. Since we're talking about all the, of our local teams who won last week, we might as well stay on that trend and hit them all while we're on it. Marion, big win over Mahanoy area in a shootout. Uh, another team who might have found some momentum a little bit. You know, the Colts were going into week eight and remarkably have not thrown a touchdown pass yet, uh, but they're getting it done in other ways. Last week against Panther Valley, it was a bunch of defensive scores and things like that. And, uh, last week, Pollock got going a little bit on the ground, so they're finding ways to put points on the board, even though it's not through the air. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Do you think, though, that like that fourth quarter against Panther Valley is something that maybe kind of galvanized the team, or do you feel like maybe that's one of those moments in the in the season where that's that's a turning point? You know what I mean? Because they, be. they were down. Could be. Um, and there's still a lot at that point. There's a lot. There's a lot of football left in front of them, and there still is. But for them to be able to kind of turn that around, win that game, and then come back against a Mahanoy team that's that's definitely it's been competitive this season right. um, and shown that it has the ability to score points. Um, and produce, and it's not, obviously it's certainly not a gimme, but for them to go out and put up 41 and knock off Mahanoy 41-28, I think that's really big for Pat Morgans and this whole program, you know, it's kind of, maybe that quarter against Panther Valley was just that lift that they needed, and um, obviously it's not something that you ever expect to score that many points, 40, you know, 40 plus points in a quarter, but um, it certainly seems to have, you know, given them the boost uh, that the whole program needs. So uh, Northwestern getting a 14 nothing win over Banger. Maybe not the offensive uh, kind of explosion the Tigers thought they could have, but a win's a win. They're getting back on track slowly but surely. So the Tigers are trending uh, in the right direction. Caleb Clymer with a touchdown reception in that game. And, uh, you know, actually Northwestern only had seven first downs and 155 yards of total offense. So you want to talk about a team that capitalized on some things and found some ways to win. Uh, and they pitched a shutout, too. So kudos to the Tigers getting it done. And you look at quarterback Devin Ballinger, who over the last couple of weeks has had a few 200-yard passing games, you know, three, four touchdowns, um, been only a sophomore, but been super impressive. So for them to be able to kind of maybe win a game like that where they sort of grind it out, um, maybe the offensive numbers aren't eye-popping, the stats maybe aren't pretty, but uh, they definitely showed that they're able to to take care of business and um, you know win games that way. So it doesn't always have to be just any kind of a you know forty something to thirty something shootout. Um, they can they can kind of shut it down on defense and uh, and grind, grind out the win. So it's big for them. Any big surprises last week? I mean, there might, there's a ton of them every week, but is there anything that uh, caught your attention? Specifically, I mean, we could probably both agree that Taquan Bradley Chambers breaking the Leighton uh, rushing record against a super quality opponent like Tamaqua is surprising. Uh, we could probably both agree on that. Yeah, and I think, you know, for it too, to kind of come a week after Justin St. Hill had his game against Blue Mountain, and then all of a sudden you have another 300-plus um, yard performance on the ground. Um, it's it just shows too, you know, the kind of the caliber of players that we have in the area. So, um, you know, you think about that, and it's kind of uh, anything you can do, I can do better. And you know, and then again, they both did it against quality opponents. With uh, St. Hill doing it against Blue Mountain, which you said knocked off Pottsville, and um, Chambers doing it against against the Tamaqua team that uh, that was at one point five and zero this year, and also beat Blue Mountain. So, A lot of football left. Yeah. So, so I think those were kind of, I don't know, two sort of moments that kind of stood out. Uh, Pleasant Valley falling to Deeruff, you know, that's a case where the Bears certainly have a lot of injuries this year that uh, I think we talked about it a couple of times over the last few weeks. Um, maybe just, I don't know if unfair expectations coming off of last year, what they did averaging almost 45 points a game, you know, with the weapons that they had, but so many injuries. Uh, Brandon Keyes done for the year. Um, you know, wide receiver Mikey Brown missed a lot of time, 
Nasai Moon got hurt last week. The running Red back. Beck got Red hurt. Red Beck's been hurt, been out for a while. Um, Can't catch a break, man. A lot of you know, kind of shuffling guys around on the line. Um, so it's been it's been tough for the Bears this year. Uh, currently one and six. So um, just definitely something where this week they travel to East Stroudsburg North, though a team that's zero and seven, um, but has been competitive in some games and. Uh, We'll see if maybe Pleasant Valley can kind of pick up pick up the second win of the year this this week against North. I know you're going to cover that game, so I got to ask you, where are you catching your connecting flight? Um, I don't know. Um, just hoping that maybe our our bosses don't want that story, uh, you know, too early Friday night. Uh, <laughs> That's I'm in the street middle of nowhere, man. Yeah, I'm going to be driving around for a while, just looking for a place to send my story. Hopefully, the McDonald's is 24 hours, and uh, worst case scenario, I can always use my phone as a hotspot. So good to just know. Saying, just saying. But we'll uh, let's see, some Colonial League teams looking to rebound this week uh, in some real kind of Colonial League rivalry fashion. Catasauqua gets Pomerden. Uh, Pomerden is a team who, up and down, up and down this year, um, their two biggest lopsided losses were probably two of the perennial powerhouse teams in the Colonial League. Pomerden did not start on the right foot last week. A couple early turnovers, couldn't get anything going. And, you know, some things just snowball when you play a team like Palisades. Uh, and, the, you know, if you don't start off on the right foot and get that confidence and that momentum, uh, it could turn south in a hurry. Yeah, Palisades has been certainly one of the most impressive teams, um, you know, all year. Uh, certainly has that Colonial League kind of under its thumb right now, um, you know, been able to take care of teams like Notre Dame, like, you know, like uh, Southern Lehigh. And they've played, they've played close games, but uh, last week, 62-6 to six over Palmerton. Um, certainly nothing, you know, for Palmerton to hang its head about. Palisades is one of the best, one of the best teams in the area. Um, well, maybe not in the area as it's in, you know, Bucks County, I think. But, um, but certainly, Palisades looks like a front runner right now. Right. To be one of the top teams, you know, as far as districts goes, too. But um, like you said, Palmer has a lot to play for, and we'll hopefully try to get back on track against. Yeah, Palmer. a lot of football at Palmer. Yeah. Four and three have a big win against Salkin Valley a couple weeks ago on their resume, uh, and a lot of other quality wins too. So Palmer, you know, right there, a lot of Colonial League teams right there. Uh, they'll take on Catasauqua at home, and if you're looking at another team, Northern Lehigh. Lost to Salkin Valley last week, 54 to six. Uh, the Bulldogs will take on Salisbury this week. Um, this, is a, this, is a, this is a very winnable game. It's gonna be a good game for Northern Lehigh and Salisbury. That's a Northern Lehigh team who scored at least 40 points in four of the seven games. I'm sorry, this, I'm sorry. Northern Lehigh has scored at least 20 points in four of the seven games so far this year. So they're putting points up on the board. So this is a good opportunity for the Bulldogs to get on the board. And Salisbury really exploded last week against Penn Argyle. Um, just really um, new quarterback, you know, kind of just things seemed to really click for the Falcons last week, maybe for the first time in a couple of weeks, uh, putting up, uh, putting up more points than they probably have since week one against Caddy. Um, seems like that offense was kind of struggling for a little while, but um, really seemed to kind of, you know, everything really seemed to kind of click last week um, against Penn Argyle. So, so we'll see what happens this week against Northern Lehigh for Salisbury. How about Jim Thorpe finally allowing another touchdown? First time somebody scored on the Olympian since week one. Yeah, and um, you know, I was there, I was on the sideline, those kids, it means something to those kids on that defense to keep opponents out of the end zone, to keep opponents off the board. Um, I know uh, a little bit disappointed, I think, maybe that they did, uh, they did allow North Schuylkill, uh, quarterback Doug Weiss, to, uh, you know, he connected um, to, to kind of punch it into the end zone, but either way, uh, I think it was still impressive for them that that game was, at one point, I mean, it was... 21 nothing and you know it's 28 6 and and then all of a sudden it's 28 18 and again they were still able to put that game away um, and make it 42 to 18 and and i think it was a big win so um so we'll see this week against the if you hold a quality team to 18 points i like your odds of, of winning and getting it done if you do the math jim thorpe is now yielding three and a half points a game to opponents this year so uh, the Red Swarm living up to that nickname everybody talks about. They're for real this year, and that defensive line is something else. And scoring, you know, 37.7, which is second best in the area to Lee Heighton, which is just a tick below 40 at 39.4. So, I mean, they're doing it on both sides of the ball. It's been impressive with Nick Roshak, Justin St. Hill, Sean O'Toole, um, you know, CJ Selby. These guys, you know, they're doing it 
and they find different weapons. So, you know, last week it was, uh, you know, it was St. Hill taking a lot of the snaps and he was able to kind of get other guys involved and things were working. So we'll see, you know, we'll see how things go moving forward. I saw Thorpe against Blue Mountain, Blue Mountain a few weeks ago and they got some good kids in the secondary too. Madera really impressed me. Playing corner, broke up a couple big passes. So, you know, uh, pass deflections aren't something you'll see in the box score and, you know, for high school writers, it's hard to keep track of everything. But, you know, there's some unsung heroes on every football team. Like we went to Lee Heighton today to talk about uh, to talk to Taquan and talk to Tom McCarroll, and we saw a big poster in their locker room with their whole offensive line on it. So that's cool. There's a lot of continuity in that Lehigh program. And I think, you know, Tom even mentioned that, that, uh, that a lot of the attention goes to Taquan for rushing for 373 yards, and rightfully so. Right. And it's certainly an, an impressive feat, but just as much goes to that offensive line, those guys that that make the holes, that create the lanes, um, and they take a lot of pride in that. And uh, that's something that they had uh, a nice group coming back. Obviously, uh, this year they had big expectations. Um, we're looking to do big things. So for them to be a part of that, I think is just as big um, as it is for for Taquan. You know that they that they played a role, and like you said too, with Cody Cody Shear also going over a hundred yards. Yeah, uh, that's impressive. You know, not only do you have a guy rush for almost you know, 375 yards, but you have your quarterback also go over 100. So, so that was a big night for them, you know, just as a, as a unit, not just one player. So our game of the week this week is Jim Thorpe at Tamaqua. Two teams, I don't know how you separate them. I don't know what you do here. Jim Thorpe, uh, on paper, probably the slight favorite now just with the way things have fallen. But as we spoke about before, there's no way to gauge these teams anymore. Everybody's so competitive and uh, the game plans are, are so well thought out. You can really see each team trying to take advantage of what they think they can get you know, out of the other opponents. So Jim Thorpe travels to Tamaqua, another big game for both teams. And... Whew. What do you what do you do with this one, man? I mean, you look at that Jim Thorpe defense, and you know, North Schuylkill threw the ball quite a bit last week. But Jim Thorpe came up with three interceptions. Um, you know, with St. Hill, it was O'Toole, uh, Trevor Kiefer. You know, so then they forced five turnovers. So, um, you know, Doug Weist has been huge for North Schuylkill's offense um, at quarterback. But uh, you know, North Schuylkill tried to maybe beat Jim Thorpe with its best, you know, obviously with its best weapon, um, with its, with its aerial attack. And the Olympians were able to, you know, to, to kind of answer. And um, I think that's going to be big this week now, where you saw Tamaqua have success against Lee Heighton throwing the ball last week. But hey, don't forget, they also have Nick Reiner and Nate Boyle um, and some guys that can make plays on the ground too. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what uh, what side prevails this Friday night. So. Lee Heighton will travel to Pottsville. Pottsville probably angry, probably really wants to get back on the right track. Got shut out by Blue Mountain last week. Uh, never easy traveling all the way to Pottsville if you're Lee Heighton down, you know, 61 all the way there in Crimson Tide territory. Nice stadium, Beautiful stadium. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they'll get Ian Renegar and all those kids that are fired up. So another great game. Lee Heighton on the road traveling to Pottsville. I'm sure we'll hear a lot about that next week after the after the dust is settled. Uh, Marion goes to Shenandoah. Uh, the Colts are going to try to get back and on track and make it three in a row uh, after they you know, they were really in a drought scoring-wise in the first couple of weeks. They scored 12 against Fairfield, I believe, and then they were shut out for three consecutive games. So now it's points galore. So Marion's going to try to continue that trend at Shenandoah Valley. A lot of our local teams are on the road this week. Yeah, um, and that's, again, a game where you feel like maybe Marion can kind of keep that momentum going, though. Um, big game last week against Monoy. Hopefully it carries over this week into, uh, you know, into Shenandoah Valley where they can kind of – you know, keep things moving forward. And Marion, again, is certainly, as a Class A team, well positioned to uh, to have that kind of postseason success. Like last year, played for a district championship at 5-5. Five and five. Um, This year, the Colts are 3-4. and four. Um, They certainly, you know, like a lot of our teams. I mean, Pleasant Valley's 1-6, and six, Northern Lehigh's 0-7, but we have Panther Valley 3-4, and four, Northwestern 3-4, and four, Marion 3-4, and four, Palmerton 4-3, and three, and then Tamaco 5-2, and two, and Jim Thorpe and Lee Heighton are undefeated. So... Um, I mean, depending on how things shake out, it's that six classes and districts is crazy. You know, you look at the five A standings; there are only four teams, so all five or all four are going to get in. Which means East Stroudsburg North, which is zero and seven, has clinched a spot in district. And they have to go play Whitehall probably in the first round or whoever it's going to be. And it's just like. I'm sure a lot of people have mixed feelings on, on the classes broken down like that. Yeah, and um, I mean, you see it. I think it's you see it with every year, I guess you kind of have those cycles, uh, you know, different 
different classes, maybe, you know, 3A or 4A is, or 6A obviously is pretty well loaded, uh, maybe pretty top heavy, um, about 13 teams there. But, um, but yeah, obviously some it's um, a little bit uh, more conducive, you know, obviously to, uh, to being able to make the postseason. And then with others, it's a little more difficult. So we talked about Northern Lehigh traveling to Salisbury, trying to get on the board this year. Northwestern is going to take on a perennial powerhouse. Southern Lehigh, another tough game for Northwestern. Uh, Catasauqua at Palmerton, uh, Panther Valley at Haven. It's a Haven team who started out 0-4. Uh, did, you know, that wasn't your typical 0-4 team. They played really well against some of these big schools at the beginning of their schedule. Um, and I saw them a couple times, and you know, you can see the talents there, but it sounds cliche, but they just were not executing up to the level that you're accustomed to seeing a Mike Farr team uh, kind of do. So they're going to take on Panther Valley at home, and uh, talk about this game a little bit. Last year, last week has to... I feel like Panther Valley has a little bit of momentum, had a great, great game running the ball with uh, Reedy Figueroa and company and uh, played pretty good defensively too. And running the ball has been Schoolville Haven's, you know, kind of bread and butter for the last, you know, however many years. And you look at Kobe Brish, obviously he's been huge for that offense, um, you know, just kind of, you know, coming in now as, what is he, a sophomore? Uh, yeah. Now he's the feature back. And you wonder too, though, if there was any kind of hangover, um, you know, maybe from last year. Uh, they lost, obviously, Lozada, their quarterback, you know, the Callion brothers. They, they don't have all the same playmakers, right. but a lot of the pieces are the same from that district championship team. Um, but maybe a little bit of a slow start by Haven standards this year. But things are rolling now. They're into that second half, Division Two part of their schedule. And, um, again, we'll kind of see at the end of the year because it would be real interesting to see if uh, – you know, we get a, maybe a rematch in the district championship game with Schuylkill Haven and Palmerton. Last year, I think it went 42-7 to to Haven, but uh, it would be interesting to see what would happen if those two teams met again this season for if, district title. Maybe look at Panther Valley. Look at their last eight quarters. They only had one bad one. They played seven really good quarters of their last eight, so this is a team maybe picking up a little bit, and they'll have a big test of Schuylkill Haven this week. Like you said, Pleasant Valley is traveling at East Stroudsburg North. Good luck with that drive, buddy. I uh, hope your car has an oil change recently. Uh, and you look at some of these out of the area, out of our area, but in the area, <laughs> District 11 kind of games. Blue Mountain at North Schuylkill, another huge game for two Division One teams. What do you think about that one? I think maybe we'll see kind of what uh, what this Blue Mountain team is all about. Um, you know, I think we know what North Schuylkill is about. You know, they've played tough games all year. They played with Heighton right. tough. They were in that Jim Thorpe game again until, you know, late. Thorpe added a couple of scores. They edged Schuylkill Haven by a couple yeah. of points. Uh, Steelton, big comeback. So they've beat Mount Carmel. Yeah, so they've been battle tested. Uh, right. I guess it's cliche, but they've played a lot of tight games. But there you have, you know, a Blue Mountain team that knocks off Pottsville, um, a Pottsville team that. You know, look at the schedule, the way that they've they played Why I'm Missing, they've played Harrisburg. Harrisburg, they've played, and they lost to Blue Mountain. Or Crestwood they played, Crestwood. really so, weird schedule for Possible. So you're not 100% sure, you know, what, uh, you know, kind of maybe what they're all about. So. Muhlenberg, they lost to Muhlenberg, I think, week one. Uh, the quarterback threw four interceptions, could have just been a fluky kind of game. Sure. So it's, it's hard to gauge these teams, especially ones that we don't see all the time. So big game there out of Scoop League Division One. Just going down the list here, Central Catholic at Stroudsburg. Liberty and Emmaus, two teams that I always get wrong and mix <laughs> up. I don't even know what to say there. Uh, you know, Minersville takes on Mahanoa area, another good Division II Schuylkill League battle going on there. Whitehall, Bethlehem Catholic, another big game. I'm sure it's going to draw a lot of attention at the gate. A lot of people are going to want to go see those two offenses go at it. Ah, tough game. Going to be a real good one. Yeah, I mean, those are the kind of games with these EPC teams where – you can't count any of them out. Um, they always seem to put up a fight. Um, a lot of these games, sometimes they end up 51-49. Um, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, three and four or seven and zero. Oh. Um, these teams always seem to be able to kind of find a way to to make these games maybe closer than you would think or closer than the records would indicate that they should be. But um, yeah, these games are always barn burners, I guess. Or, Shootouts, if you if you prefer that term, it, uh, depends. I guess. So last week was a, a lot of homecoming games for our schools, and I'm long sure half times, huh? long half times. Yeah. I'm sure that you know amped up everybody. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it really amped them up or it's not the halftime of game. Oh well, yeah. I mean, that's always yeah. I mean, good crowds, good crowds, but it was long half times. I mean, they'll put you to sleep, man. Have deadlines. You know, and here I am looking at the scoreboard, thinking about how I'm going to do my stats, and 
sure. get my story done and nah, I'm just checking dog memes on, on Twitter and Instagram. So I hope everybody enjoyed last week's uh Thursday and whatever day, what day is it? Wednesday, Wednesday times new sport sports yeah. chat. I need a coffee. I came and talk, and we had Tom McCarroll and Sam Bonner here. And a couple weeks ago, we had Scott Price and Pat Morgan's. So uh, we're gonna try to get some more coaches throughout the year. Maybe this trickles over to the winter. Hopefully, get some good, you know, personalities on and, and notable people in the area with us from time to time. So if anybody's ever interested, please do reach out to us here at the Times New Sports Department. Tomorrow's gonna be an awesome paper. Thursday football pages are always cool. We got. A great story, uh, Overtime, by Patrick Matsenko this week, wrote about Quan Bradley Chambers, uh, who's also our Player of the Week, so he'll kind of have two stories in the paper. Our Game of the Week will be written by Brad Hurley, which will be Thorpe and Tamako. All the stats are in there, football preview capsules, uh, which after this I have to go call some coaches <laughs> and get some quotes, and yeah, not it's going to be uh, another good week, and it never disappoints. No. No, it's, uh, you know, always... Uh worth the wait. And Friday in Friday's paper, you'll see all of our grid picks columns. Uh, Rich Strack has been writing those and you know, putting his pen to the paper. Yeah. I'm not really picking great games, though. I don't know. Maybe yeah. he just you know, has a bunch. doing in the grid picks. Oh, I'm doing great. I don't even know. I, I don't know. I do them in 30 seconds when I leave here. I don't yeah, know. because we got to send them when we leave tonight. Sure, absolutely. So. But yeah, thanks again yeah. for everyone's support. And uh, I guess anything else catch your attention about week eight, Pat? Nothing. Nope. Nothing. Yeah. Want to go finish work? It sounds like cleaning people might be here too. So. Must be. Well, we'll see you next week, guys. Thanks for tuning in.